Hi there, I'm Jeff Goldberg, and I'd like to talk to you about ClickSense Platform Security. ClickSense Platform Security rests on four pillars. Network security protects the communication between ClickSense services and web clients. All communication between the client and server use digital certificates to encrypt information during a user's ClickSense session. To secure the server, ClickSense leverages the operating system to protect the platform, allowing only authorized users processing access to required resources. Process security involves putting ClickSense through rigorous testing during development to mitigate security risks and handle unanticipated events. Application security, our focus area for this presentation, includes authentication, authorization, data access, and auditing to make sure users have the correct access to applications and self-service capabilities in the ClickSense platform. Let's dive into application security and Click's platform approach to managing user access. Access to ClickSense begins with authenticating to the ClickSense server. Authentication in ClickSense grants access to the platform. Once ClickSense grants a user session, Authorization checks are performed constantly to match the user to the appropriate access control. Changes to access control have an immediate impact on a user access to content and capabilities. When a user enters an application, their credentials are checked against the data model to determine row and column level data access. Based on the access granted, data in the application is reduced and the user sees only what they are allowed to see. To manage and administer the application security platform, ClickSense provides license monitoring and access control auditing in the Click Management Console, enabling Click administrators to govern user access to the platform. I'm going to take a minute to clear up some general misconceptions about authentication and authorization and explain how ClickSense treats these two parts of security. Authentication is the process where an individual's identity is confirmed. Authorization is the association of the confirmed identity with rights, permissions, and access control. We like to say Click performs the last mile of authentication. We say this because Click does not perform identity verification but a user credential is required to gain access to the platform. Click does implement all authorization for Click based on the user credential. External systems may provide attributes describing the user, but they are used in the ClickSense security framework to proffer access. A key distinction in identity management and verification, and the authentication Click performs, is to look at systems like Active Directory, OAuth, and SAML. These solutions do perform identity management and verification. They sent a validated user credential to ClickSense to complete the authentication cycle, hence the last mile reference made earlier. What does the flow of authentication and authorization look like for ClickSense? The authentication process begins with the user logging into a form, computer, or some entity that collects user ID and password information. The information is sent to the identity management system and verified. After verification, the user credential is sent to the Click proxy using one of the available authentication methods ClickSense provides, a ticketing API, HTTP header authentication, a session API, or SAML service provider. The Click proxy manages all authentication and load balancing in a ClickSense deployment. The proxy authenticates the user and returns a session to the client. Post authentication, authorization takes place where the security rules engine evaluates the user's access to resources and capabilities within ClickSense using supplied attributes by directory services like Active Directory or sent through the authentication process. Taking a deeper look at authorization, ClickSense employs an attribute-based access control rules engine to execute access control and capabilities for users in a deployment. At the inception and throughout a user session, 
ClickSense monitors changes in security rules, processes them through the rules engine, and applies them to the user. The way it works is upon logging in, the rules engine reviews the user and their attributes and creates an access request. The access request is evaluated against the rules in the rules engine and determines if the user has access to a resource. In the example, a user who is a member of the sales group is requesting access to the quarterly results stream. According to the rule, only users who are members of the finance group are allowed to access the quarterly results stream. Consequently, the user does not gain access to the stream because the group attribute does not match. Some noteworthy points about security rules in the rules engine are that access is always granted, not denied. This means that ClickSense will apply most privilege to a user based on all of the rules that a request is run against. The policy is independent of users, and it's scalable, flexible, and allows you to ease management by giving you the ability to apply one rule across a broad set of different resources. You can also control what users can see and do. You use user directory attributes or custom properties to define roles within ClickSense, assign actions to allow capabilities, set capabilities to resource types like apps, streams, and data connections, and you can also apply one or more conditions to grant access to users. ClickSense stores application data in QVF and QVD files residing on the file system. At rest, QVF and QVD files may be encrypted using the operating system file encryption system or a third-party software running on the server. When the contents of a QVF file are loaded into memory, the operating system security system protects the memory, allowing only authorized ClickSense services to read and write from the memory ClickSense uses. As data travels from the ClickSense server to the client browser, it's encrypted using the digital certificate applied to the ClickSense server. When data arrives at the client, the browser decrypts the information and metadata renders it in the browser window. Once the user has access to an application and opens it, their credentials are sent into the app. Upon opening, a check is made against a table called the Section Access Table. This table defines users as admins who have access to all of the data in an application or users whose visibility to data is granted by a reduction field in the section access table. As a result, individual users are able to see only the data they are allowed to see, even though the application may contain a complete set of records. The way data reduction works is through a table called the section access table. This table sits in the click application, hidden from view, and controls access to data within the application. When the user enters the app, their user ID is checked against this table and associated with the reduction field. This reduction field is matched with a field in the application data model. The matching values in the reduction field are supplied to the application data model and the app responds by displaying only the data that the user is allowed to see. To omit columns from view, an omit field is in the section access table and takes a field name, hides that field from the user so they are unable to see it or interact on it. Tying the process together looks like the following diagram. A user makes a request for ClickSense content. The ClickSense proxy service authenticates the user and creates a session cookie in the browser. The session cookie identifies the user to ClickSense and synchronizes with a user directory to import attributes. At the same time, the rules engine authorizes the user to ClickSense content using the attribute-based access control model. The session state for the user is created in the engine. The engine performs dynamic data reduction using section access. The engine sends the content through a WebSocket connection to the client to render ClickSense content in the browser. In order to govern the platform and ensure users possess the correct access and capabilities, 
ClickSense provides an audit function. The audit tool inside the Click Management Console enables administrators to audit security rules against any resource and any user or group of users based on attributes. The return results from an audit query identify the access capabilities users have on the queried resource. With this tool, it is possible to spot inconsistencies and to correct changes to security rules. ClickSense provides a comprehensive platform for managing and maintaining application security in a deployment. We offer multiple methods to authenticate users to the platform, maintain their access control to resources in real time, reduce data using the Kix engine so users see only what they are allowed to see, and provide governance tools to manage and audit access control and security. Thank you very much for joining me today. Take care.